Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Oh, I did it again. I got it to the red. Yay. You did it. You are a force to be reckoned with. Rawr! She did it. Let's one, one more time for old time's <laughs> sake when we used to go live. Rawr! Yes, she's unleashing the beast. I am. It's, it's coming out somehow. Well, the beast system's in full view. It, it sure is, boy. Please do subscribe to both channels, EE Arts and also Evolutionary Energy Arts. As you see, we just did one on New York City issuing a N-U-K-E strike preparedness video. It was just fascinating to see them actually do that. That's just a sign of the times. 444 views 22 minutes ago. Oh, yeah. Symbology everywhere. Mm-hmm. Alignment. It's all in alignment. And make sure you got that little bell click, too. We do want to thank our Patreons and those that are supporting us on Ko-Fi. We couldn't do it without you guys. Let's just listen. And, and keep in mind, this is a great awakening. We have a great unveiling and a great awakening going on at the same time. Because make no mistake. Sit down, you'll hear what I have to say. If you think... You... You know, and let's just listen to one more and then I'll make that statement. This is uh, You Know Who from the Great White North. Yeah, you can hear the the word in the background being heckled. You know, one thing that the guide showed us is it won't be long and you will not see any of them in public. They wouldn't dare step in public in the future. No, they, they won't be able to because as we can see all across the globe, it's becoming more and more clear. The illusion of our freedoms is being made truthful. So when people do go up there and speak saying they're from some entity that we can trust, people are going to see right through that and it's just not going to be tolerated. So they won't actually be there in the physical when really, really breaks open and becomes the reality. How many of you guys are familiar with or have watched this season or maybe you've watched it all, Stranger Things? Um, Stranger Things honestly is so unique feeling in so many ways and yet it's giving us a little disclosure. It, again, here you go with everything is right out there in front of our faces. So originally, again, this is set currently in the 80s. Um, I think the first season is like 79. I forget if the first season was 79 or if it was 80. Um, but anyway, now we're on season four. Season five will be coming out. And it's set with this group of kids that grow up together. And one of them, interestingly, her name is Eleven. Why is her name Eleven? Well, because she's been part of top secret experiments by the U.S. government to develop psychic powers to the high degree which is reality it's absolute reality there's declassified documents that show that and you know we have firsthand knowledge of that as well and you know this is something that's just a, a reality out there and it's not just the united states has done it and russia's done it i suspect china's done it i suspect a whole bunch of different governments have done all sorts of experiments we know there's remote viewers out there that have been trained by the government. There's all sorts of psychic warfare that goes on. All kinds. And when we were watching this show, I tend to get um, these energies. And, and if I'm getting certain, it took us a little while to watch it. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, I, I kept running into these emotional like issues where I couldn't watch it or I'd break down crying. So I know that they were sending information through there that was actually tinkering with our bodies. So... Sometimes we had to spend a little time between shows for us to go back and watch it, but I couldn't take my eyes off of it. There is so much truth in that. There is, absolutely. And, you know, again, each season has its own little uh, things that happen and, and different characteristics of the characters come out. 
And here you see Hopper, for instance, who is uh, right here. He's a country bumpkin cop that is basically drunk all the time, can't get to work on time. You know, just he's a mess. He's a total, total mess. And by the time we get to season four, he's turning into a superhero mm -hmm. with no abilities. He's just transforming and... You know, he's he's just it's not like he has abilities like 11 and 11 is obviously that's a key number, right? 11 is an angel number. 11 is a master number. And and she has incredible psychic abilities. Yes, she does. So these were just some things that were really interesting. It was quite a, a emotional roller coaster at many times just to watch it because of the, the, the stuff about it. That's so true. Well, they have what they call the in-between. So the in-between we could look at as like the lower astral realm. And this realm, there's a rift that opens up and then dark forces come through and start to exert their influence in this reality. And so, I'm trying to remember, I think it was Indiana, right? I think they're set in Indiana, if I remember right. It's a, it's a small Midwestern typical town that they're set in, but then there happens to be, you know, here you have a government facility doing top secret experiments, opening up a rift between dimensions. And we've talked about this before, rifts between dimensions. Well, you know, part of what really gave Cindy a hard time was this character who's called Vecna. This is the baddie for this season. And spoiler alerts here to a degree, we'll try not to give you the if you guys haven't seen the finale, we'll try not to give that. We just want to touch on um, some things that relate to the bigger picture of what's going on here right now. So Vecna is the baddie, and you know what Cindy would was making note is all these tentacles that look like tentacles that come off of him. You know, it was absolutely horrible. I mean, there was a couple of things in this show that really gave me the willies and made me have to stop. One was what they what they do to people when they're training them for their psychic abilities you know the extent that they will put people away the extent that they will cover things up you know for their own for their own creations and then this guy this understanding this was so clear when i saw it and how they work through our traumas so there's this one patch of consciousness that's very very aware and when it wants to manipulate things, it does reach out its tentacle and it works through people through their traumas. And we can see that's why it's very important for this force, this lower, lower fourth to make sure that we are in a very disturbed place where we are creating traumas, you know, onto one another so that they have this ability to to control us from that. You know, don't underestimate this at all. Absolutely. And, and as we've shared with you, one Draco can control a hundred typical humans. If you guys caught the video that we just put up today on evolutionary, again, you know, we're touching on the fact that people are being, well, changed in order to become more manageable, more manageable. So again, yeah, when we looked at IQ dropping, there's reasons why our IQs are dropping. And they've been dropping since the 1960s. It's part of a purpose. And again, you know, we've, we've talked about the ultimate goal is a smaller, more manageable group of beings on Earth just to keep things running in a minimalist way. Yet... These beings do feed off of our, our emotions. And so, again, you know, art imitating life, it's, it's amazing the power of Stranger Things. But part of the power is the fact that this representation here of this bad guy is really a representation of a being that really does exist. And as we've shared with you before, when you look to the Alien series, especially when you look to Prometheus, and you see those beings, those alien beings, you know, the ones where they open the mouth and another set of teeth come out. It's based on a real type of being. When, when we look also in Stranger Things, they have these ones where their mouth opens up into like quarters and they have rows of teeth. Again, there are, well, if you want to call them interdimensionals or extraterrestrials because both are appropriate. Uh, or if you want to call them the demonic, fine. 
but there are beings like that. They are there are beings. This being is able to affect our reality on this plane because of that rift. When we look back to uh, the legends of Atlantis, it's thought that there was a rift that developed and led in the darkness to Atlantis, which eventually led to its downfall. And many of our leaders that we see right now in positions of great power, they're the same souls that were here at the end of Atlantis, helping to bring about its demise, whether intentional or unintentional, as it depends on the individual that you're talking about. But these same souls are here again at the end of this age in this cycle. As here you're looking at one of the one of the main characters as she's getting lifted up off the ground and put into a trance-like state uh, before this being would then basically sacrifice her and steal her energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's just something that really gave me the willies and I had a hard time working through that one too. But the ease in which this entity lifted her up. Now, I've had, I've had dreams and I, I've heard some of you guys talk about it too where these my I, my body is stuck in a room and there's like this entity that has a hold of it and they can throw me around like a rag doll you know this is in the in the dream but the thing is is that they really can throw beings around like this you know and again they they latch on to you through our traumas and that's why it becomes so important when we say heal for for the betterment of all that really does mean as we're healing our wounds are closing up they're 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 getting um scarred over so that they're strong and they're not able to be penetrated again that's how we are able to get away from these beings so that they cannot latch on and use us like puppets and this, again, is where we need to tap into our own power because ultimately we can tap into places that they can't grow. It's They can't, well, they're stuck. They're not growing and they can't go is what I meant to say. But at the same time, that's the interesting part is that we are growing. We're growing back into what we were and we're going to grow into a place where they can't follow us. And so right now they're basically trying to utilize as much as they can of the energy uh, that we put off in whatever way possible. And, you know, that can include physical uh, physical nature. Their, their real power is in getting others of the physical realm to do their dirty work for them. And so being able to control the minds of others and getting them to actually commit acts against other people that are physically here on the 3D. However, there are some stronger ones that can actually attack. And, you know, you have probably been perhaps aware of things. Anybody that's watched the movie The Exorcist well back in the day and then actually looked into cases of possession. Uh, yeah, you know, there was in Bridgeport, Connecticut, I want to say 1970. Mm, I'd have to look into it again. I don't know. 72 keeps popping up into mind, but I think it was a little later than that. Uh, a case in Bridgeport, Connecticut, eerily like uh, the Amityville Horror in some ways, sort of like the Exorcist in some ways. You know, actual refrigerator, a heavy couple hundred pound refrigerator was moved and hurled towards somebody. You know, these, these things, uh, with some of these entities, they can actually achieve things like this or literally bring out cuts and scratches on people. So again, we need to always be drawing in the life force into our own bodies, building our energetic body, because the physical body, again, is just a vehicle while we're in this particular density. Yet there are opportunities for growth in this density that we don't have in other densities, and that's one of the things that's overlooked. Things that we achieve here, we will take with us. And we will be a changed person when we're back on the other side. Mm -hmm. You know, when you were saying that opportunities, that's a really key word. But so is opportunists. There is a lot of opportunists out there. And, and it does become helpful when you start to get an eye out for these opportunists so that you're not taken advantage of and used, you know, to throw somebody off of their off of their healing path or somebody or even yourself off of your own healing path. Once we have that recognition, things can start getting a lot better you know so many years after the fact because of this show 
So this girl's got her headset on. What she's listening to, she's listening to Kate Bush running up that hill. This song that some might think of was one of those big hits of the, you know, one hit wonders of the 80s. It was a hit back in 1985 and it actually became number one in the UK now because of this show. And um, this is kind of this girl's power song. And it keeps when she's in a certain zone. And, and again, this is all about it's all about our frequency, which is governed by our emotions or how we allow our emotions to carry us away in a negative way or how we build our emotions in a power, powerful, positive way to shield ourselves. Mm -hmm. Emotions are really, you know, and they're ju they're just something that we all go through. We all go through traumas. And then there's times when we are, because of the traumas, we are incapable to hold on to our emotions in certain situations. And that's definitely something that they love to take advantage of. Um, but again, we have to heal ourselves and understand how do I heal myself? Where do I start? But, you know, everyone's journey is different, but it really starts with understanding who you are, understanding where you're from. You know, you hold on to that force, that force within you that is so, so strong and you start steering yourself, you connect yourself with your higher self and then use that force of nature to move yourself forward and heal yourself. And I should say naturally as much as possible because you don't want to be bringing in a lot of external entities because a lot of times those just open more doors. Absolutely. And so this show is good about letting us know the reality of opening up portals. We're always opening up portals. And a lot of times we don't understand that. It could be a positive or a negative. So I thought this was interesting because like when she wants to, there's a part in here where she's going to purposely seek out this entity as part of a trap that's been laid. So she turns her music off to allow her mind, her vibe to change. And then in this other scene, you have this other character. His name's Eddie, and he's a metalhead. And uh, so what's, what's his trigger? It's Metallica. And so interestingly enough, they chose Master of Puppets. And, you know, while the song might be about drug addiction, in this case, you know, it, we're talking about a different puppetry, more like that puppetry again uh, that we're talking about with the Draco being able to control the minds of one Draco controlling a hundred typical people and the reality that you know this is an interdimensional battle if you want to call it spiritual warfare what you're really saying is that it extends beyond this dimension into the higher realms which you know interestingly enough the next realm up is actually a lot lower <laughs> in many ways as this is where it's you know basically the home territory of all these parasitic beings that just feed the ticks the leeches the parasites the bottom dwellers you know they feed off of other life forms and while life does feed off a of life source gives us all that we need in abundance and it's up to us how we how we utilize things and what energy we give off so this is kind of the thing that gets this character pumped and psyched even to face um, a battle that doesn't appear to have any sort of victory in sight. And again, master of puppets, you know, that's really what we're seeing here. Who is the master of the puppets? Because again, when we look to these political structures, they're all puppets. Who are the real masters? They're not beings that are on this density. And this is just representing how each one of them kind of has their own music that, that gets them to where they need to go. And, and don't we all have that too? I, I think most of us do. Mm -hmm. There is this internal guiding system that tends to give us some understanding or even, you know, if you turn on your favorite music, have you ever felt that mood switch just go ahead and, and change itself? Well, they're, they're very in tune to this and they do know how to put out frequencies to control us good, bad, and different, make us, make us sad, make us cranky, make us happy, you know, so just keep in mind that we're always kind of being tinkered with and we can't allow that to steer us. 
Absolutely. And so who faces off against this villain? Well, all the kids do, yeah, and the adults too. Um, but the real power is actually the little girl, Eleven, who has these abilities that are really a foreshadowing of just how powerful humanity is as a whole. Because our abilities really are such, just down the line a bit, when we get out of this Kali Yuga, that these beings would just all be nothing to to what we can achieve. Mm -hmm. I mean, once she understands her source core power, it, it's over. And that's the message for all of us, is understanding this. When we look to sculptures and different artwork that we see all over the world, we see the same sorts of dark, demonic-looking creatures. Demonic, draconian, whatever you want to call them. Again, it's, it's beings that we come back in contact with in a physical manner as we go back up. As they are stuck. They are where they are. They're not going anywhere because they've chosen to be, you know, these parasitic t ticks and leeches instead of growing their own light. They suck off the light of others. They're stuck. They want others to be stuck with them. And this is part of their bigger plan. When we recognize again, when we see that Vecna creature, the big arch villain in the season and we look at the big villains that are out there in reality in our world it's it's a reflection as you're looking at the constellation draco and a reptilian and of course many would just say oh yeah yeah sure reptilians and so more and more people all the time are, are waking up and looking at the evidence that's all around us throughout history and throughout all the different indigenous people Meanwhile, there was a crack opened in Earth's magnetic field on Thursday, stayed open for 14 hours, and the opening line here is why I went off on this tangent. On Thursday, a crack opened in Earth's magnetic field, stayed open for nearly 14 hours, allowing Vecna and his minions through from the upside down. Ha ha ha, are they telling the truth? Yeah, right? Right? Well, you know, and then of course we have CERN. And what's CERN really doing? Oh, it's just smashing the smallest bits of matter that we know of together and just just to see what's going to happen. Right. You know, I mean, it's just something that um, they they want to laugh things off and they want to make like, oh, none of this could really be real. You're not being affected by things that you can't see. But yes, you are. Always. Always, always, always. So it goes on and uh, talks about the powerful solar winds pouring through the hole creating a geomagnetic storm that sparks some pretty epic aurora more than that though you know and this goes into the crack in the magnetic field that was created by a rare phenomenon called a co-rotating interaction region cir from the sun cirs are large-scale plasma structures generated in the low and mid latitude regions of the heliosphere region surrounding the sun that includes the solar magnetic field and the solar winds. And so it basically f flung energy that interacted with the earth. And what all this is doing is this is changing our consciousness. It is a reawakening our DNA that's been turned off by the powers that be. Again, you know, when we look at that creation story from the Anunnaki, it's not really a creation story. It's an altering story. And, you know, there's actually laws in place here on Earth at this time that would make it so that if something was actually genetically altered, you could actually go get it patented and it's going to belong to you. Yeah. Hmm. You, you see where we're going with all this. I know a lot of you guys do. There might be a couple that that don't. But I think most of you guys do get what's going on here. So what's naturally ha happening is, is just beautiful. It's a reawakening, a reawakening of humanity and seeing things for what they really, really are. And I thought this was cute, so to speak. The solar system could collapse because of a passing star. Scientists are predicting, you know, again here, this is from the 11th. You know, you, you can't make up the timing on these things. Scientists have warned that if a passing star moves Neptune's orbit just by one-tenth of one percent, the resulting chaos would cause the other planets in our solar system to collide. Wow. And w where is 
Nibiru right now? Well, we get that it's you know somewhere in this zone. It, it's outside the orbit of Uranus, and you know it, we can't necessarily see it all the time because its vibrational frequency is the lower fourth density. So that's why every now and then people might get glimpses of it, especially if they are themselves intuitive and have the ability to to kind of open up that portal to get a little glimpse. And many people will see it. They might there's people that probably could see it now if they had a, a telescope aimed at that. And other people might not be able to see it. It's again, it's a matter of where our consciousness is lying. But just telling this, uh, you know, us this to me is obviously a reference to all those thoughts of Nibiru causing cataclysm, which it did in the past when it came by. And it's not going to do now because it won't be allowed to. Because, again, we, we have had a massive war of a cosmic scale that's still technically ongoing. And, and it's being monitored from the higher densities now be after all the destructions that happen much more closely. As again, those higher density beings want there to be free will. And they, they want to let sources, you know, God with the big G's original plan pan out and allow things to develop as organically as possible. But at the same time, when there's abuses, uh, then they will step in as as absolutely needed as long as it doesn't take from our human experience. Because ultimately, we are souls having a temporary experience in these bodies. Mm -hmm. And we each are a spark of source. And we all have this vessel. And sometimes there might be a crack in this vessel. But depending on how we move and shift our energies, that crack can simply allow more source light to go out and affect others in a positive way. Ultimately, you know, you could view it as we are all consciousness exploring creation, its own creation, through all these different facets, just like a diamond has a different... You know, all these different facets to it and the light might reflect in slightly different ways from one facet to another. We know this is uh, a universe um, that operates in a fractal nature and reality operates in a fractal nature. Fractal is basically where the whole is contained in the part. And we see this nebula and, you know, it's so easy to see an eye. Again, you know, consciousness the eye, consciousness, just observing. Quantum physics is all about the reality that it's all about the observer. Everything manifests according to the observer. Without the observer, would there be anything to even manifest? And so, you know, yes, we are living in the mind of God. There is one gigantic cosmic mind. And what do you see in this picture? To me, I see a rider on a white horse, but that's just me. Definitely a force that is coming to create some kind of a change. That's what I see. It's a force that is going to be expanding. This reminds me of Kalki, um, yeah, which is the next incarnation of Vishnu. Um, that that's just me and some might see Yeshua on a white horse um, again it, each one of us does have a unique lens that we're watching everything through so we've talked about the fact that this energy that's incoming is the guides have described it to us as Durga energy well what is Durga well the mother of the Hindu universe is is Durga Durga is the divine mother and she's all goddesses in one, so to speak. And again, Hinduism, the Sanatana Dharma, views the mother energy as manifestation. So when, you, we, when we look at it, two sides of one coin, we have the consciousness side, the potential side, and then we have the side that actually manifests. Well, the mother energy is that which manifests. And that is what's coming in now, is, is the mother energy. Because again, Oh, we should have shared that. That the that, channeling. No, we should have shared the uh, the bear oh, that video. Was there was there was a really cute bear video with a mother bear taking her cubs over one at a time. There's four of them. She's trying to juggle because as soon as she gets one on the other side, 
another one would come running back and there's like a, a whole bunch of cars just waiting well you know you don't want to be around a mother bear that thinks that her cubs are in danger mm -hmm. and this is that energy that does move across people where they start to understand that they're not in a they're not positioned well so when a mother energy realizes something in her home her castle is not positioned well and people are vulnerable it's like this this energy this response this reaction it, it starts to spread and this is what we are seeing it's starting to come to the earth now it's hitting people in little bits but it's it's going to spread a lot lot more and this is the Durga energy and it's a very important energy um, it's an energy that will overcome people and it it it's it's nature it, it's simply it's nature so it's not something that can be altered it's just something that we, we will do so one translation one way you could translate it is Durga means a fort or a place that's difficult to overrun an apt metaphor for this deity's protective militant nature Durga is sometimes referred to as Durga Tina Shini, which literally translates as the one who eliminates suffering. And so the Durga energy is coming now to eliminate suffering on this planet. What's that going to look like? Um, well, hang on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's nothing that can stand in the way of this energy. Nothing. And, and these beings know that. And, you know, you might think of Shiva as the destroyer, but this this energy is going to wipe their slate clean. It's going to just eliminate all of the system. There will be nothing left of the system. You know, in Hinduism, the major gods and goddesses have multiple incarnations, meaning they could appear on Earth as a number of other deities. Durga is no different. Among her many avatars are Kali, and Kali is very intense energy mm -hmm. this is a very just energy that is going to write a lot of things and it's going to do it in such a way in accordance to natural law bhagavati bhagavani ambika lalita gauri kandalini java and raheswari and you know again this energy is going to be fearsome to behold and it's going to basically come and indwell in the people of the planet yeah i mean it's going to be something that starts as a trickle and just gets stronger and stronger and stronger and this is one of our guides peter dunov and he was a bulgarian mystic he predicted as we've talked about many times a super wave a coming super wave 39 years before super wave theory was ever first proposed he saw it he spoke of this fire, this energy that was going to come and transform the entire planet, bringing into being a whole new human race, a totally new race and with totally new abilities. So he, the way he viewed it, he said, everybody's going to soon be subjected to this divine fire that's going to purify and prepare them in regards to the new era, the new age. And I know, you know, ah, new age teachings, ah, get behind me, Satan. Well, again, you know, so much of it's been distorted. They distort every system in every way they possibly can to make everything look bad besides whatever they want to promote. You know, I, I do. There's a lot of New Age teachings, but I like to call it ancient teachings. You know, get it from the direct source. Perennial wisdom is, is the term that's used by many that, that study uh, the esoteric teachings, which simply are teachings that were given to us by beings that are on fifth and sixth density and and that we understood ourselves when we were on fifth density before the fall down to this 3d and the transition now into a 4d existence so everybody will soon be subjected to this divine fire that's going to purify and prepare them in regards to the new era some decades will pass before this fire comes and it will transform the world by bringing it a new moral well, we're seeing exactly what the morals of the elites are. Uh, there are none. It, you know, <laughs> basically, you know, simply put, uh, yeah, it, that's really the case. And we all have things to work on. But at the same time, it, it, there's a big difference when we're actively working on ourselves, trying to make ourselves better. 
and just wallowing in the muck and the mire. And that's where you want to be. That, that's really what we have with these e-lights on the planet, these parasitic bottom dwellers. Again, whatever you want to use, whatever term you want to use. This immense wave comes from cosmic space and will inundate the entire Earth. All those who attempt to oppose it will be carried off and transferred elsewhere. Although the inhabitants of this planet do not all find themselves in the same degree of evolution, the new wave will be felt by each one of us. And this transformation will not only touch Earth, but the ensemble of the entire cosmos. And he does talk about terrestrial upheavals. He does talk about Earth changes, floods, hurricanes, gigantic fires, quakes. They're going to sweep away everything. Blood's going to flow in abundance. There will be revolutions. Terrible explosions will resound in numerous regions of the earth. Where there is earth, water will come. Where there is water, earth will come. And then he refers to waves of cosmic electricity, which will sweep the earth. Indeed, the main component of a superwave would it be its cosmic ray electrons. And so the earth will be swept by these extraordinary rapid waves of cosmic electricity. A few decades from now, beings who are bad and lead others astray will not be able to support their intensity. So he also explains that our solar system is currently transversing an unhealthy, dusty region of contaminated space called the 13th zone, which was left behind by the destruction of a constellation or star. Our solar system is now transversing a region of the cosmos where a constellation that was destroyed left its mark, its dust. The crossing of a contaminated space is the source of poisoning not only for the inhabitants of the Earth but for all the inhabitants of the other planets of our galaxy. Only the suns are not affected by the influence of this hostile environment. The region is called the 13th zone for it calls, one calls it the zone of contradictions. Yes, and you know, that's why nothing makes sense here. And, and all the things that we are given by these parasitic bottom dwellers don't make sense. Because, you know, again, they contradict themselves all the time. But we are approaching the exit of this space of darkness. And we're on the point of attaining a more spiritual region where more evolved beings lived. So, again, this is why... We have all these legends, and they want to put all these beings that we have called the gods, the devas, the deities, into the same bunch. But they're not. They're very, very different. Some of these, like the Anunnaki, are basically beings that are subservient to the Draco, which are subservient to that AI consciousness, which which is not of a very high vib vibratory rate. So anything that we get there are teachings that puts humanity into a subservient, um, mindset into a slave mentality those are teachings of these beings which are part of the control system that's on planet now any teaching that tells you that the divine is within you and it's up to you to shine your own light well again that's teachings that come from the higher densities mm -hmm. and ultimately it's just one big huge kind of equalizing type of force Yes, and so, you know, we are closing in on that. And while we see that super wave coming through um, in its entirety where everything's changed permanently, uh, still a couple of decades, it's, the cracks are coming in, the energy wave is pouring in, and the changes are happening right now. Indeed. So it's a, it's a great time to be here. Yes, and again, thank you guys for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. Stay prepared in every way. Do check out the mantras um, playlist because, again, mantras to me uh, are indispensable. They basically put up an energetic barrier that the lower vibrational frequencies can't tolerate. So they do help us to keep ourselves um, separate from those demonic forces that are on the planet and lift us up towards the higher densities. As always, God bless and namaste. Namaste.